A new hurricane could be forming somewhere in the eastern Pacific or Gulf of Mexico over the next several days. We also take a look at if the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season could be a very historically active season. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 7th, 2022, quarter on 1230 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for more tropical troubles over the next couple of weeks in the Gulf of Mexico and the Eastern Pacific Basin and a look at what could be upcoming. Could we have a very historic 2022 Atlantic hurricane season? Well, let's go ahead and find out here. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic and parts of the Eastern Pacific this afternoon. We noticed that not much is occurring this afternoon. We actually have some quiet periods uh, across the Atlantic Basin. Finally, after the remnants of Alex became a post-tropical cyclone yesterday afternoon and evening, this is now working its way far off towards the high seas of the North Atlantic Basin and will be of no significant concern over the next several days. Our focus will now turn to the Eastern Pacific and parts of the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean as we could have yet another repeat of Agatha and Alex uh, reoccur over the next several weeks as a potential Central American gyre could occur and develop over the next several weeks across this area. So let's go ahead and find out about everything. So first of all, the tropical weather outlook for the Atlantic side and the Eastern Pacific side as of this morning is quiet. And I suspect that it'll be quiet for a few more days, but we are starting to get into the time frame where I could start to see a yellow X, a uh, little yellow uh, X occur out here in the Eastern Pacific and maybe then eventually into the Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche. So if we look here at the sea surface temperature anomaly map, we notice that this is updated as of yesterday. We notice that we are still firmly entrenched within a La Nina pattern. We have had some significant warming over the last several weeks as a result of continued westerly wind bursts. This has led to increased downwelling and has led to a warming of the equatorial Pacific. However, this is not really changing anything too much to any sort of extent. We are still firmly within a La Nina and we expect to stay within a La Nina. And meanwhile, the tropical Atlantic is warming up quite nicely here. Water temperatures on the order of about half a degree to a degree Celsius above the long-term average. This is very significant. You can also see this like horseshoe shape uh, appearance here. And this is a more typical appearance of very busy 20, uh, Atlantic hurricane seasons and is no exception for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, including this warm uh, pool up here towards uh, the Canary Islands. And this really is a, a sign of active seasons because this warm water will translate south later in the season and warm up the tropical Atlantic. So that is going to be one thing to watch as well. And in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean, there was some cooling as a result of potential tropical cyclone one, uh, which was then tropical storm Alex after crossing Florida. But that is beginning to warm up quite nicely. The rest of the Gulf is very warm as well. Very supportive for intense hurricanes. That is for sure. And if we compare that to June 5th of 2005, 2005, remember, was the very busiest hurricane season on record, really, with Katrina and other such storms. And you notice that the comparison, there was a little bit cooler subtropics up here, but a very warm uh, MDR here and certainly a warm uh, southwestern Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico. And that is translating very well to what we are dealing with currently as of today. So just kind of something very interesting of note there. And the upper ocean heat content map, this basically just tells us is there are conditions below the surface of the water that are favorable for hurricanes to sustain themselves. And the answer in this case is yes, the warmer colors indicate higher upper ocean heat content and theoretically uh, those higher upper ocean heat contents are able to support more intense, vigorous hurricanes. And we notice that all out here in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean, very high upper ocean heat content. And this could be a problem as we head into later in the season, because if you have a storm that comes within this vicinity and is able to intensify uh, under you know the right wind shear conditions, this water is going to be very warm and very conducive 
for rapid strengthening. And we even have some higher upper ocean heat content now showing up closer to Mexico and Texas. So this is something to watch as we go forward in time. Now, something that I did find very interesting here and is honestly a bit concerning, this is a look at the wind shear from about the 5,000 foot layer all the way up to about 39,000 feet. And these blues here, this is wind shear that is lighter than average. And in the reds, this is wind shear higher than average. And we notice that this is a uh, kind of valid through August, September, and October of this year. And we are looking at a widespread area of reduced vertical wind shear in the tropical Atlantic and especially in the Caribbean. And that could definitely be a role in supporting a more favorable Caribbean than we have had in previous seasons. So we definitely could see a very busy Caribbean season this year. And the pressure anomalies are expected to be much more below average than we've seen in the recent years uh, across the main development region. And this definitely could, could go to support uh, hurricanes and tropical systems that quickly develop out here in the MDR. So certainly something that we will have to be watching very closely with time. And we are already very well ahead of where we should be. We're about 172% uh, above where we should be already for uh, June because uh, we already had Alex, which produced about uh, 1.6 uh, ACE units, which is the accumulated cyclone energy. And um, that is definitely where we are at right now. So we're about 172% above average already. And uh, we could definitely see it start to ramp up I could see something much like this where we're, you know, probably over 100% uh, above that uh, average. So we, we will be looking at a very busy season for sure. Now, if we look here at the CANCEPS forecast, another thing that is very interesting here is the height anomalies. We could be looking at uh, some robust upper level ridging out here in the Canadian Maritimes. And this ridge, again, it's the ridge over troubled waters effect. This ridge slides eastward and it's a blocking pattern preventing storms from easily recurving harmlessly out to sea. So storms could get pushed further west this year. And that's definitely a concern that we've seen in some of the models. Now, if we look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar, millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what we're looking for here is any potential tropical systems that could be forming over the next several days or weeks. And here in the GFS forecast, you notice that this is actually right here, the remnants of Alex. It is now quickly moving on and becoming a mid-latitude cyclone. You can see very clear frontal boundaries that are attached to this here. So there's a very clear transition into a mid-latitude cyclone. And for the next several days, in fact, it remains quiet, but then you can see a tropical system trying to form and develop out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin. And this is as a result of the more favorable background state that is out here right now. Despite the very limited area of favorability, there is still a window of potential development out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin. And you notice that it kind of just hangs around and honestly becomes another repeat of Agatha where it just kind of hangs around and eventually makes that hook up towards the north and east as we get much more of the Central American gyre to develop. And you can see that it ends up slamming again, kind of into the same areas that were already impacted uh, by uh, the areas of Agatha really. And then a new tropical system tries to form out here in the Atlantic and uh, on the Caribbean side. This broad Central American gyre develops we get a system here, though I think this is not necessarily, this is probably a ghost storm in the model. I'm not really going to really count this as a developable uh, chance right now, but there definitely looks like there could be a Central American gyre that is setting up. And even in the European forecast, now the Euro here and the Zero Z run does develop a system out here, but it doesn't curve it back in. But well, we still end up with a Central American gyre that ends up developing out here. The only thing, though, is if we look at the 500 millibar height anomalies here, we notice that there's going to be increased ridging out here. And this increased ridging is really going to be the driving factor in pushing most storms further off towards the south and west and confining everything basically into Mexico. Basically, the, the thing that happened the first time we were expected to get a Central American gyre 
it basically was just stuck over Central America. And that's a result of this big ridge of high pressure that's going to be centered over the central United States at the time. Now, the GFS ensembles are definitely bullish on this. This is day five. We notice that there's a large clustering of developable storms in here, anywhere from near Mexico to far into the Eastern Pacific Basin and also something out here in the Caribbean and also the European ensembles, a little less bullish here, but something you can definitely tell there's at least something that tries to develop very close here to uh, Mexico. And then you could have something uh, by the end of next week that tries to sneak its way into the Gulf of Mexico. But I'm not really expecting anything significant at this time, but we'll have to wait and see. It is approaching the start to the ramp up of the very busy part of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Real quickly for Florida uh, probability of precipitation here. Again, we see that the areas, of course, down here in Miami could get some pretty heavy rain, about an 80 to 90 percent chance of rain over the next uh, day here. This is for today's date, the 7th of June. And like I said, there is a very high probability of rainfall here and rainfall could definitely exceed over uh, three inches in spots that were already affected by potential Tropical Cyclone 1 or Tropical Storm Alex as it then moved away. So certainly some flooding potential there. All right. Well, that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.